Patch 12.2 is underway, and as always, we've got you guys covered with the best solo carry picks of the patch. Three champions for each role who our analysts rate the highest for the current state of the solo queue meta. But before we get into it, be sure to check out Skillcapped if you want to truly get better at League of Legends. We're the only service that offers a money back guarantee if you don't climb at least five divisions while actively using our service. We do this because our service really does work, and if it doesn't work for you, you shouldn't pay. Learn more at the end of this video or click the link in the description below. Alright, let's get started. Beating your lane opponent and snowballing the early game is so much more important now to be impactful as a top laner. Teleport nerfs don't allow you to influence the rest of the map early on, so if you want to be useful, winning lane is vital. Darius has seen a nice uptick in power because of this, and is our first solo carry top for 12.2. Tom nerf this patch is great for Darius as well, combined with lethal tempo being weakened in the early game. Many Darius players have been running lethal tempo the past while, but the nerfs this patch will just put more priority on Conqueror. Ranged matchups are the ones that will give you the most pain, so banning out Teemo is a good idea. Build-wise, there are so many options right now. Sterix and Deadmans are the standard second and third purchases, but your Mythic can evolve with each game. Trinity is great into squishies, Stridebreaker against ranged or heavy kiting comps, Gore Drinker into bruisers, and Divine Sunderer versus a few tanks. For runes, grab Conqueror with Triumph, Tenacity, and Last Stand. Bone Plating and Unflinching are the optimal secondaries. Despite a Q damage nerf for 12.2, Shen holds on to his spot in our top three. Shen is such a valuable pick for the current meta due to his ability to not only win lane, but also influence the map. No other top laner can accomplish both, as well as Shen after the teleport nerfs. Shen has been thriving into most lethal tempo abusers like Yone, Irelia, and Jax, so the lethal nerfs only make those matchups better. A lot of Shen's laning strength comes from the ability for him to block autos with W, so banning out a spellcaster like Mordekaiser will be of good value. Definitely make sure to run Ignite instead of teleport now. Most high elo Shens have swapped over to Ignite, but lower elo Shen players are still running TP. A super interesting new build has popped up being Frostfire into Demonic Embrace and Thornmail. Xpidu seems to be the player who's popularized the build, but if we're wrong on that, let us know in the comments below. We always want to give credit where it's due. Demonic Passive provides you with even more percent health damage when using Q. You also convert 2% of your bonus health into ability power, which has great synergy with Frostfire Mythic Passive. As for runes, run Grasp with Shield Bash, Second Wind, and Revitalize. Cheap Shot and Ultimate Hunter work best for secondaries. One of the most reliable carry top laners for every single elo is Urgot. In the higher elos, Urgot falls off a bit, but for the lower ranks, he's an absolute monster. Just like Darius, Urgot doesn't mind the TP nerfs as much as other champions because he has the ability to dominate lane. You E start at level 1, and if the opponent plays disrespectful, lane can be over within the first few seconds. Mundo is one of the few matchups most Urgot players struggle against, so you'll want to consider banning him out. The standard core build is Titanic Hydra into Black Cleaver and Frostfire Gauntlet. You've got options though, as Hullbreaker is a really great purchase in games where you're ahead early on and can pressure side lanes aggressively. Press the Attack is Urgot's best keystone with Triumph, Tenacity, and Last Stand. Bone Plating and Overgrowth are the most optimal secondaries. Hecarim has been a massive riser over the past few patches and makes his way into the top 3 for 12.2. There are a few different factors leading to Hecarim's rise, the first being meta junglers like Viego, Talon, and Graves falling in strength. By now, you should know of the new hybrid build of Chemtank into Man Immune, which is providing that extra power. There's really no jungler with more reliable engaged power and backline access than Hecarim. Ghost popped with Chemtank activated and E running gives you godly amounts of movement speed. Man Immune provides a ton of AD once you get the upgrade to Mura Mana, and you never have to worry about spamming abilities too often. Whenever Ghost is available, you want to be eyeing out opportunities as your early gank threat is top tier. Get an early lead, complete chem tank, and your ability to steamroll through the enemy team is insane. Phase Rush is Hecarim's best keystone with Nimbus Cloak, Celerity, and Water Walking. Eyeball Collector and Ingenious Hunter are the way to go for secondaries. Fresh off some buffs to kickstart Season 12, Diana Jungle is back in business. You're not going to find the same kind of early game gank power as Hecarim, but the scaling and skirmish post 6 is superb. Whenever your ultimate is available, you should be looking to strike, as there are few junglers who can match your impact in a 3v3 fight. Build versatility is amazing for Diana, as you can opt for a pure one-shot build or more sustained damage. Nashir's rush into Rocket Belt and Zanya's is best against bruisers or tankier comps. When against multiple squishies, prioritize Shadow Flame as the extra burst is more beneficial. Roll with Conqueror as the keystone, followed by Triumph, Alacrity, and Coup de Gras. Magical Footwear and Cosmic Insight are the best secondaries. 
Locking down a spot in our top three for another patch as one of the best solo queue junglers is Nunu. Nunu has become such a power pick in Season 12 due to many other junglers being nerfed, Sunfire seeing buffs, and Scuttle Crab being less important. Spam ganking is the name of the game with Nunu, and there's so many different ways to approach it each and every game. Level 2 ganks are effective if your teammate is playing a champion with reliable CC. The ability for you to constantly gank a lane over and over again to snowball them out of control is better than any meta jungler. Best build is a Sunfire Rush and a Dead Man's Plate second, and Thornmail or Spirit Visage third. As for runes, pick up Phase Rush with Nimbus Cloak, Celerity, and Water Walking. Triumph and Tenacity are what you'll want for secondaries. As more players pick up on the strength of Shadow Flame, Vex has become an even stronger mid. The pick potential with ultimate and ability for you to obliterate squishies with two items has solo carry written all over it. Resets on ultimate allow you to be a consistent force throughout fights and clean up kill after kill. The Everfrost into Shadow Flame combo provides a little bit of everything from great one shot to survivability and some kiting power. Victor being the most played mage and someone who can abuse Crown is a more annoying matchup to deal with, so he's a good ban if you plan on playing Vex. For maximum one shot power, run Electrocute with Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collector, and Ultimate Hunter. Biscuits and Time Warp Tonic work great for secondaries. Victor has held down a spot in our top three for the past couple patches now as the most consistent solo carry mid. The mage item rework has been amazing for Victor as Crown, Cosmic Drive, and Shadow Flame all benefit the champion immensely. Zed and Kiana nerfs in 12.2 are more than welcome for Victor players as heavy dive assassins can give you some difficulties. We definitely side with the Kassadin and ban for this patch as his play rate remains high and mobility is hard to deal with. Core Victor build is Crown into either Shadow Flame or Cosmic Drive second. If ahead early and against squishies, opt for Shadow Flame first, otherwise Cosmic is a great pickup too. Rune Page is first strike with free boots, biscuits, and cosmic insight. Best secondaries are mana flow and transcendence. More and more players are starting to pick up on Anivia's current strength with her play rate rising patch after patch. Anivia has been a massive winner over the past few weeks with crown introduction and archangel buffs. One major flaw for these immobile mages is they're easily caught out and bursted by hard engage. That's no longer as big of an issue thanks to crown passive Zanyas and passive egg. Surviving that initial onslaught is the key as Anivia is an absolute beast in extended fights. Much like Victor, the Kassadin matchup is one of the few who's more difficult to manage, so it's wise to remove him from the rift in champion select. Most reliable core build is Crown into Seraph second and Zanya's third. Standard rune page is Electrocute with Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collector, and Relentless Hunter. Presence of Mind and Coup de Gras are the go-to secondaries. The most off-meta champ we'll feature in today's video is coming off some major buffs in 12.2. Bot lane Vagar is the pick and should be on everyone's radar. Q cooldown buff combined with receiving more AP stacks from killing cannon minions amplifies your scaling potential even further. With Vayne as a highly contested pick in meta, Vagar is the answer to shut her down. As a shorter ranged ADC, Vayne needs to be up close to deal her damage, and thanks to Vagar Cage, it becomes impossible for Vayne to play teamfights. Even if you don't plan on playing Vagar in every single game, he should be a pick you have available when your team locks heavy AD. Especially in lower elos, your team will consistently draft full AD comps, so Vagar's value is even higher. Core build is an Everfrost Rush into Zanya's second and Rabadon's third. Run Electrocute with Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collector, and Ingenious Hunter for primary runes. Mana Flow and Transcendence are the best secondaries. Locking down the second spot for ADC is going to be Vayne. Strong scaling marksmen like Vayne are loving the current meta. Lulu, Nami, Lux, Yumi, these enablers are being played at extremely high rates in the support role which allows Vayne to thrive. Even after the shield bow and wits end nerfs, Vayne continues to outclass the majority of ADCs. There's definitely an argument to be made in swapping shield bow for Kraken in games where the enemy lacks heavy burst. Into tanks and lower mobility comps, the value from Kraken will be higher now. A heavier scaling rune page is starting to pick up attention recently. You will continue to run lethal tempo as the keystone, but secondary runes are where things differ. Instead of running domination, resolve is seeing more success. Conditioning and overgrowth are the two runes you'll want to pick up. Jin held the highest play rate for any ADC in 12.1, and we don't expect that to change for 12.2. Jin is one of the few marksmen not affected by the lethal tempo changes, so his power level will remain high. Jin's an extremely reliable ADC for solo queue, as he's useful no matter the state of the lane. The utility Jin provides combined with his damage potential allows you to be impactful in many different ways. Build is the same as always, with a Gale Force Rush into the Collector 2nd and Fire Cannon 3rd. Fleet and Dark Harvest continue to rival each other as viable keystone options. It just comes down to whether you value the extra survivability from Fleet or raw damage from Dark Harvest. Ever since his buffs a few months back, Blitz has been the longest standing solo carry support. 
The value from playing Blitz is at an all-time high, as you do an amazing job at countering the most played supports. Annoying enchanters like Lulu, Soraka, and Nami don't stand a chance against a good Blitz player. Although winning lane is ideal, there are many other ways to be effective on Blitz. With mobility boots and W activated, your gank potential is super strong. Keeping an eye on the map and punishing the enemy mid for overextending is something you should be looking to do every single game. Locket or Shirelias are the best mythic options for Blitz, into Zeke's Convergence second and Wardstone third. Aftershock and Predator are amazing keystone options depending on the situation. In matchups where you'll be fighting in lane a ton, Aftershock is of great value. More difficult matchups or when paired with a scaling ADC like Twitch, running Predator helps bolster your roam plays. It's really hard to beat Soraka's consistent carry power from the support role in 12.2. If you're able to reach a couple items, there are few who offer more impact throughout skirmishes and teamfights. Soraka used to be pretty exploitable early on due to her squishy nature, but that's just not the case anymore. With Guardian Shield, Bone Plating, and Running Barrier or Heal as a secondary summoner, you've got so much durability. As long as you don't fall heavily behind early on, it's happy days for Soraka. Jinx and Vayne heavily contested in the early ADC meta is also something Soraka loves to see. Being able to buff up these hyper carries means it's game over 25 minutes onward. Moonstone into Redemption 2nd and Warmog's 3rd is the core build. Summon Airy is great in matchups where the enemy lacks hard engage, while Guardian will save you from those super aggressive bot lane duos. With Lulu nerfed in 12.2, the priority on Nami will be headed north. Nami is the ultimate lane dominant enchanter, as W and E are so influential for quick trades. Although landing bubble on a consistent basis is ideal, simply buffing your carry with W and E is all it takes to be effective. Pair Nami with Lucian or Kate, and the ability for you to run away with the early game is super high. Imperial Mandate Completion is such a massive spike as the passive is guaranteed to proc when you activate E. Chemtech Putrefire is slotted in second with Ardent Sensor or Staff of Flowing Water third. Electro is the optimal keystone when you're paired with a strong laning ADC, while Summon Airy works best in more passive lanes. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about skill cap. So, we offer a 5 division rank up guarantee, and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week. With over 1,600 guides curated into over 100 courses, no one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell 714 times and counting, where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $4.99 a month if you are serious about improving. So, those are the three best solo carry champions to abuse for all roles in patch 12.2. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you back soon.